Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.19.5 So this version focuses on two big features The first one is the relay simulation So this is a new simulation group that can be found in the generate and then simulation You're gonna see the relay sim And this is a group of a node that you to simulate physics under the relay integration algorithm In most cases you're gonna see it used to simulate stuff like cloth or ropes if you right click inside this relay simulation, you're gonna see this new group category, relay sim. And there's a number of nodes in this group, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. I'm just gonna show you the basic example of what you can do with this simulation. So as I have said, the relay simulation is commonly used to simulate cloth. So the most common setup for this would be using some kind of a mesh node. In this case, I'm gonna use another new node in this version, the lattice mesh, which you generate a lattice or a grid shape mesh, and then you put it in the relay mesh. And there's a number of nodes that use to manipulate or define the mesh. Then when you play the animation, it gonna create this closed simulation, right? It just simulates some closed movement, then we just cut the, the code. Relay simulation can also use to simulate like ropes as well using this relay part node, and it works similarly the same way. This is just going to be an introduction for the new system. And the second set of features is an improvement on the amateur system or the bone system. There's a number of new nodes that we'll use for procedurally constructing the amateur or the bone shapes. We have the amateur from part that will convert a part data into a bone. Right? We have a procedural IK. So now you can define inverse kinematic using the node instead of using the amateur node itself. We have the amateur post bone which allow you to post a specific bone instead of controlling every bone at the same time. This is just for some basic animation. This one targeting on the bone in the words kinematic handle and have it move along a given path. Then we have amateur subdivide. This one we just subdivide or divide the bone into smaller pieces. We have a mirror which will create a clone and then reflect the bones using some given angles. And then we have the stacker which will apply transformation in a staggering manner. So it will apply a transformation, the bone transformation from the parents to each of the children with some delay to create this stacker effect. All of this to help creating more uh, procedural animation. Then we have another new node which is a mesh vertices. And this one is simple, it just take in a 3D mesh or then convert each vertices into a set of points right? that you can use in other nodes. And now for other features, first we have a new setting to always show on timeline which will make that node always show on the timeline below which can be useful for the cache node right because now you can see the caching status at all time and on the topic of caching there are also some modification to the cache system so now if the node cannot cache the entire animation it will just do not cache at all it's just gonna clear all the cache in the next simulation this can be a problem with simulation node like the smoke simulation the fluid simulation if you only catch half of the animation and then you try to play it next in the next frame, it's just gonna go uh, out of whack, right? So now, if the node cannot catch the entire simulation, then it will not catch at all. Then we have a new export format for the export node. There's now option to export as a 24-bit bitmap, so it does not include transparency. And there's more improvement on the custom file selector. There is a column view to show you the parent columns. You can now rename the file, you can now add folders. There's now like file name warning. And as you show, there are a series of bug fix in this version. I will be continuing working on a port to Linux version. So in this version should come out on the Linux as well. There's a bug fix on the Linux version there that I haven't covered here yet. It's mostly like some, some smaller miscellaneous stuff. But that should be it for today's video. So thank you everyone for watching. Special thanks for all the Patreon supporters. And see you in the next one.